How's it going? Welcome back to Dylan Pickup's blog. Today we're going to be talking about pots, as in the volume and tone type, on your guitar. Stay tuned. Alright, so let's talk about this. What pots should I put in my guitar? Now we know that the main choices for pots are 250k and 500k and sometimes one mega ohm for bases and stuff or if you're really trying to let some let some treble go so usually 250k pots are for single coils 500k pots are for humbuckers that's kind of the like the normal buzzword on the internet right um, that's actually that's kind of the most common Let's talk about why those choices are made and if they really are a rule that we should follow every time. First of all, let's talk about the basics of how a guitar circuit works with no uh, tone pots or anything in them. So here we have our little few example. We have our uh, pickup over here and we have nothing in it. There's no circuit. It's basically, or there is a circuit, but there's no nothing in it. There's no resistors, there's no pots. And you can do this, you can just hook your pickup up to your output jack, boom, you have this circuit right here. All the frequencies are going through. Now there's a couple fundamental things we need to know before we start building a guitar circuit. One is, the very first thing is, that electricity is always going to take the path of least resistance to ground. So what do we mean by that? We mean that if we were to put a wire between here with no resistance, zero, a short, that all the signal, even though there was still a wire going to the amp, all the signal would be redirected through this straight to ground because it's the path of least resistance. If we put a resistor in here that was, uh, let's say, 250K or 500K, then some of the signal would go to ground and some of it would pass through because it's not a direct short. So some of it would go and some of it wouldn't. What frequencies are the first ones to go? This is an interesting thing and in what plays into all of this. High frequencies, the very highest of frequencies, are the first ones to get filtered off the top anytime we have a short to ground in our guitar circuit. So this means that anytime we add something, and this is something to remember for the guitar circuit in general, anytime we add a pot that uses a short to ground, or we use a capacitor that shorts to ground, or we use anything in, at all in the guitar that shorts to ground, we're going to lose some highs when we use that component. Okay, So the simpler the circuit, the more accurately the signal over here from the pickup is going to be uh, transferred to the amp. Okay, So that's, that is one thing. Now if we go ahead and we put a volume pot in here, now we're all of a sudden able to vary how much that signal goes to ground. Here's how that works. Here, over here, we have a, a diagram, or it's actually kind of a drawing, really, of how your simple pot, volume pot works in your guitar. Um, one leg, there's three legs, one leg is usually bent over and soldered to the case, which is shorted directly to ground. The input is comes in from your pickup, and it goes around in a circle, and it's actually the full input signal here. The outer ring is usually some kind of carbon or graphite that has a set resistance to it for the whole length and then there is an arm a wiper that basically takes the input signal and touches it to the outside and it creates a path now when the volume is all the way down the shortest path to ground is present and you have basically a short to ground just like we had over there a minute ago with that wire no volume as we go this way, the path to ground gets longer and the guitar gets louder. Okay? Now, the resistance that this whole thing starts with is set 
by this, the value of the resistor that is this outer ring. 250K, 500K, 1 mega ohm, depending on your selection of potentiometer. Now, why does it matter? Why does it matter which one you pick? Because if this, remember that this outer ring is basically a resistor. If this is 250K, then it will still have a shorter path to ground than a 500K resistor will. That means that more highs will get filtered off with a lower resistance potentiometer because the starting out value of it, the wide open value of it, is still lower, a shorter path to ground. So just remember that, that the lower number, so we have 500, we have 250, and let's say we have a nail, okay? Um, that is zero because it's a short. You know, if you just put a piece of metal across something, it's a short. The lower the number, the faster the resistance to ground. The faster the resistance to ground, the more high frequencies are going to get filtered off. That is why, commonly, a 250K pot is used for single coils because single coils are said to most of the time be more high frequencies, more tapered towards the high frequencies, so they use a faster resistance to ground, you know, faster path to ground with a lower resistance pot to tame it down a little. Um, humbuckers, because if you go to our how humbuckers work, you'll remember that because of the way the coils are structured, you have a little less highs, so you want to let some of more of those go, so you have a higher resistance pot. Is that the rule? I personally don't think that's the rule. That is that is the common way, yes. But there are other ways to do this. Basically, um, you can use a 500K pot with a single coil. You just have to use a different capacitor. What if the point of your guitar was to be um, a humbucker that was very, very bright, like a older, classic wound PAF style that is only like 7.9K. That's a very bright humbucker. In fact, they're really jangly and sometimes they're kind of harsh on the high ends. I personally would put a 250K pot in it. Actually, I wouldn't. I would actually put a 500K pot in it and then put a fatter capacitor. But you could do the same thing. There's any combination of these things that you could do to create your tone in your guitar. Just because somebody says you have single coils, you should put 250K in there, doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. What if you put a really hot single coil um, that is, you know, you could put a 10K single coil in a Stratocaster and it could be really super dark and you would want to let some more of those bright things go. You could put a 500K pot in there. Um, you could either put a different capacitor. Next time we're going to talk about tone uh, caps and how that factors into all of this. But for now, just remember, the shorter path to ground, the lower number, is going to cut out more highs. The higher number, the, the longer path to ground, is going to cut out less highs. That's exactly, that's basically it. But those are very fundamental things to remember in a guitar circuit. Next time we'll talk about tone uh, pots and tone caps and how those factor in and how we can basically make all of this um, a whole different combination with a different capacitor and a 500k pot and a single K, uh, a single coil pickup. There's all kinds of different combinations you could do. So you can throw everything you ever learned out the window and explore some new territory and it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks for stopping by. If this made any more questions, if this raises any more questions, if you want to add something to the list of questions that we're going to talk about, please let us know. Uh, until then, this has been Dylan Pickup's blog and we'll see you next time.